Let's talk about copper, because you say AI is going to fuel a copper boom. It is, uh, because you need more copper when you have, uh, essentially, you know, electric vehicles. Also, when copper goes up, that's a good sign that economic growth is picking up globally. And China, which has kind of been in a, in a rough patch for a while here, could be a sign that they're finally getting out of that rut. Uh, economically speaking, everyone benefits when China does well, and they're the biggest buyer of copper in the world. So I think that is actually an indication that global growth is actually picking up, which has been you know, pretty lax, I would say, for the last year or so. Yeah. All right, let's go from metals to Bitcoin. Saturday was a big day for Bitcoin. I mean, I had people messaging me saying, what the heck is going on? It tanks. You know, kind of like it did around the start of the Ukraine war, right? Yes. So what's going on with this? Because I'm not seeing any hedging properties of Bitcoin. And once again, it seems to be the case. You don't get a hedge out of it when things turn sour. Mm. It just seems like the casino gets bigger and bigger, Brian. That's all <laughs> I can all right, tell. So you're totally on the casino train here. There's nothing else there for you but casino. Well, you just said it, right? I mean, every pitch you've heard about Bitcoin, Bitcoin, uh, <laughs> we're going to swip there, what? is either it's a, you know, it's an inflate, it's a hedge against inflation, which it wasn't when inflation went up, it went down. It's right. a safe haven. When you just mentioned when Russia attacked Ukraine, it really didn't move. It actually went down. And even over the weekend, we had more geopolitical risk. It went down. And last time I looked, we're still not using it in everyday transactions. That's what everyone promised we'd use it for, unless it's illicit activity, which I assume none of us are using that, you know, no. doing some sort of illicit activity. Mm -hmm. um, it really doesn't have a use case. I mean, the bottom line is the casino's gotten bigger now with all these ETFs, the prolifer yeah. proliferation of that. Mm. And it's very thinly traded, so you can have a lot of manipulation there when people just keep trading it over and over to create this mm. volume. So there's a lot of reasons why I don't love it. Okay. Step an out and talk to us about uh, the big picture market overall. We're entering on earnings season. Can the fundamentals, strong fundamentals from companies, outweigh the lack of Fed rate cuts that we now may not be getting? Mm. I, Absolutely. And I think that that's a really good point, because I think everyone was predicating this market move on the fact that inflation was moderating. Uh, the Fed's going to cut at one point. It was like six or seven times. Mm -hmm. Now we're down to two times. I think it's indicative of the fact that, let's face it, I mean, if you look at economic growth, it's been a lot stronger than everyone anticipated. And in addition to that, I mean, that, that's a sign the economy is doing well. And I think if you look at profits this quarter, they should be very good, like three and a half percent. And by the end of the year, we see double digit uh, earnings, you know, which is phenomenal. So I think it's going to be a great earnings year and markets follow earnings at the end of the day. So I think that's what's really going to drive the growth story this year. You brought up the retail, I about retail sales. You brought up retail sales earlier quickly. You said, oh, that's a sign of strength. But on a real basis, are you that excited about retail sales right now? Because when you factor in inflation, it looks to me like people are buying, uh, they're not buying more. They're just paying more for the stuff that they've already got to buy. How do you read that? I think some truth to that, but let's face it, we had a pretty strong inflation number last month, yet retail sales were still strong. And I think that speaks to the labor market. I and mean, we have an extremely strong labor market. Everyone predicted it would fall off a cliff. I didn't. Um, but, you know, if you look at it from a, just a, a demographic perspective, you just have so many baby boomers retiring. I talk about this all the time. That labor shortage is real. It's going to be persistent. Labor is going to stay strong. Wages are going to stay strong. Okay. And you're at a point now where wages are actually outpacing inflation. That's mm. the key.